Hello. When you want to get into self-hosting for your business, you will usually come across a lot of tutorials that will confront you with a lot of steps. Set up a server, make the server secure, install Docker, install various containers, configuring reverse proxies to obtain certificates, etc., etc. Today, I will show you an easy way to deploy your own secure server. And this server will hold a popular automation stack. So we will have Caddy as a reverse proxy that will handle SSL certificates for us. We will install Portainer to manage Docker containers. So you don't need to know any Docker CLI commands. We will have NetN as an automation engine here to connect various services together and help us build workflows and AI agents. And we will have BaseRow as a powerful no-code database. We will achieve all of this without even knowing how to configure Linux or knowing any Docker command. So let's dive into it the whole installation is based on my self-host playbook i have created and that is basically just a shell script that will deploy a nixos configuration to a server in the cloud and this will automatically configure all of the services and the whole system including the containers and the domains and you will be able to make the whole installation just by answering a couple of questions to the CLI tool. This will work on Windows, Mac OS and Linux. And I will show you this on Windows today because on Windows we have two extra steps we need to do in order to set up the base for it. But the only real requ requirement we have for the script is having the Nix package manager installed on your system. You can easily download and install the Nix package manager from the official NixOS homepage. And here you have set up steps for all of the different operating systems. And that is basically just executing one shell command and it will install the next package manager for you. I will do the whole process on a Windows virtual machine just to show you the most complicated setup in a video here. So let's get right into it. First of all, we need to open a terminal. So I will just go for the Windows symbol and enter terminal in the search. and. Don't worry too much about the terminal because the things we will be doing here are pretty easy. So no worries about that. First of all, we need to install the subsystem for Linux on our Windows. And that can easily be done by just entering WSL dash dash install. And this will install the subsystem for Linux. And now you can see the installation is running and it is enabling the features and it tells us that all the changes will only take effect when we rebuild our system. So we will just do that and restart my virtual machine here. And now my system is restarted and uh, I go for the terminal again. And now I just enter WSL dash dash install once again and tell the system that I want to install Ubuntu here. Now I can just enter WSL again. And at the first start of the Ubuntu instance here, it will ask for my username and my password. And these credentials are just for the Linux sub subsystem that doesn't have anything to do with your Windows user account here. And now I will just clear this out. And now I can just paste in the installation command for my script here and press enter. And you can see this will put out a warning. Nix is not installed. Please install Nix first. And here we also have an output for the Nix install command. And as I said, in the start of the video, you can of course just go to nixos.org and follow the install instructions or just enter this command here. I will just start the Nix installation here. Give it my password. 
and I want to proceed. And here it tells us what it will do with our system. We will proceed here. And now the next package manager has been installed. And in order to have it running here, I will just need to quickly close the terminal. And this can also be closed and open up the terminal once more. And now I will just drop into WSL again, clear this out. And now I can just execute my script command once more. And now it will just download some dependencies here. And now you can see my script is starting here. So I just hit a key to continue. And the first thing our script is doing here is it will create a key pair in order to create a secure login for our cloud server here. So I can just quickly copy the key output here, and then I will start deploying a basic server in the cloud. I use Hetzner in this case because Hetzner is easy to navigate even for beginners because there's not so much technical bloat as you have on AWS or the Google Cloud. And Hetzner also has a very fair pricing model that's usually cheaper than most of the other cloud providers. So that's a good choice when you ask me. If you sign up through the link in the description, you will get a little starter credit so you can basically try everything out you see in this video just for free. Of course, this can also be done on AWS, on Google Cloud or DigitalOcean or whatever. So just pick the cloud provider of your choice. So when I'm logged here into my Hetzner dashboard, I will create a new server. And actually there are not very many settings we need to do in here. So for the server location, I will keep it at Helsinki. And for the distribution, I will Ubuntu. Technically you could choose any distribution here you like, but you have to have in mind that our installation script will completely replace this distribution anyway. So you can, as well leave it to default Ubuntu here. And down here I will choose the x86 architecture and let's say to have a little bit of speed, I take four CPUs and eight gigabyte of RAM. And then down here I have the possibility to set my SSH key. I have just copied to clipboard from my terminal output and add the key here. And now I can just create my server instance here. And now I just copy my IP address to the clipboard here. And then I head over to my domain provider. In my case, that is GoDaddy. And I go to my domain here and go for the DNS section. So I will just add some A records here. So for Potena, I will just do PT test and then my IP address and set the time to live to 600. And now I add some more records and let's say we make this N at N test, same IP, same TTO, and we do the same for base row. Now my records are saved. And this takes usually around five minutes until it's propagated. So when our server installation is finished, we should be able to automatically obtain the certificates for these subdomains here. Now I head back to my script here and I can continue the installation. And here I can just enter the IP address here. And now I can configure the username I want to have as admin user on my system. So. I just define a username here. And here I define my desired password. And now I'm asked for the domains I want to have the services running on. So we had our PT tests subdomain here. And then we had init and test. And the same goes for base row. So when I have put in the domain names, I just hit enter. And now the script will ask me how we authenticate to the target machine. And here we have two choices. We have password and SSH key. And as you've seen in the previous step, we have chosen SSH key. You could technically also just do this with the password. So on most cloud providers, you will get the password emailed. 
for the root user and uh, both ways are viable here because as we are overwriting the whole installation with the secure setup anyway that we'll use SSH keys. So we take number two here and now it will start to create our configuration. And now we are asked for our cloud provider. So what we need to do here is we need to tell the script which hard drive device is used on the virtual machine and that varies dependent on the cloud provider you are using. So in our instance, we can take number seven for Hetzner and I pretty much predefined most of the cloud providers. You also have the option here to choose point number eight and this will just quickly show you how you can find out what your hardware device is. So we just choose number seven here and you can see the root device in this case is dev slash SDA and I hit yes. And now we are ready to start the installation process. One very important point here, please don't do that on a production server you have data on because as I said in the start, this setup will completely override the server including all data and the operating system. So please make sure to do this on a new dedicated virtual machine here. So now we can hit just yes, and we can start our installation. And dependent on the internet connection and how much resources you have given your virtual machine, this can take around about five minutes. Now the installation is uh, starting and there will be a lot of terminal output. So you can basically just ignore this. Now this will start building the system configuration. And now it says the installation is finished and we are done with the installation. So we will just give it a minute or one and a half minutes to boot the system. And down here you have a little bit of output. So here you have the URLs for your services. You can just call in your browser. And in case you want to connect to the virtual machine over SSH, you can also do that. So here's the command. And now we can just connect to our server here. And you can see this has already locked in my username here. And for example, when I enter sudo docker ps, I can have a look which containers are running here at the moment. And when I head over to my PT test tab subdomain, I am greeted with the Portainer interface. And here I can set my username for Portainer and create the user. And I think this has to be done within five minutes. Otherwise you will need to reset the machine because uh, this is a security matter here after installation. And then we can just go for get started and live connect to our Docker instance. And when we have a look here, you can see we got three containers here. We have Portainer, we have NetN, and we have base row. And base row is still in the starting state and that's normal for base row. It takes a little bit of time to boot up. And when we go to NetN test, Over here, you can see we got our NNN instance running, so I can just uh, set up my own account here. And now save my user and just get started. And I don't know, I can just get a ready to test AI agent example here. And of course I can build any kind of workflow I would like here. 
And now our base row instance should also be up and running. We just enter the base row domain here. And here we can also set up our own account so and hit get started. And now base row wants to just make some basic setup. So I will just create a workspace. No. Create a test database. And now you can see I also got a fully working base row instance here. And of course, what you can also see here is uh, we have a secure connection. And we have a valid Let's Encrypt certificate. So the whole server is set up and ready to go now. You can easily have a safe and secure server here where you can start self-hosting with your own data and start automating or create AI agents or whatever. So as you can see, this uh, script makes the setup of a completely pre-configured server pretty easy and pretty much effortless. The only real requirement, as I said in the start, is the Nix package manager. And on Windows, we had a little bit more to do because we had to install WSL first. But for example, on Mac and Linux, you basically just enter the script ex execution command. And if Nix is not installed, it will just output the installation command and then you just install it and you're good to go. So I have created a script to make it easy for people to get started self-hosting services because a lot of times people want to try out something and I wanted to make it more accessible so you don't have to go through a lot of tutorials to install a basic Linux server and then also fiddle around with Docker and so on and so forth. And this setup is hopefully pretty easy also for beginners. And I have tested this on Windows 11, on Mac OS and on Linux. But if you find any bugs or run into any problems, just let me know. I will link to the script and to the installation down in the description. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe. And I see you in the next video. Have a nice time. Bye bye.